Well, we are happy to welcome back Dr. Tammy Peterson, the founder of the Oxford Recovery Center. Tammy, so glad to have you back as we start a new season here on WJR. We're always excited to have you on for our long form shows. This gives you a chance to really tell us some of the exciting things that are happening at the Oxford Recovery Center. Hi, Marie. We're so happy to be here again today. Um, we're going to share some personal stories, talk about some different conditions. And I have to say, we're all pretty excited around here because we're getting ready to break down to a 35,000 square foot addition to our Brighton location in about two weeks. Well, there's a lot of things ahead on our show today, along with Dr. Uh, Tammy Peterson, the founder of the Oxford Recovery Center, the medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner will be joining us as well. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Where Healing Begins, sponsored by the Oxford Recovery Center with the founder, Dr. Tammy Peterson. And we're always so happy that she gets to join us to talk so much more in depth about what is happening at the Oxford Recovery Center. Tammy, you've told us on so many occasions how the Oxford Recovery Center has used hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or as you always say, HBOT, to successfully treat more than 100 medical conditions. And I understand that you have a very personal story about the effects of HBOT. Could you please share some of that with us? Sure. My story started in 2006. And maybe like many of your listeners, I had never heard of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I had two healthy kids. Um, my daughter was in fourth grade and my son was in fifth grade. It was the last day of school when suddenly my daughter was unable to walk or talk. And when we got her to the emergency room, we realized she had a very severe case of viral encephalitis and very little hope of survival. She survived, but when we brought her home, she functioned like an infant. She was legally blind. She couldn't talk. She screamed for hours every day, sensory issues. Um, yeah, I kind of say you name it, she had it because it was full brain damage, global brain. And this was pre-Facebook days. So I joined a Yahoo group and one of the moms from Malaysia told me about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And it was like, finally, there was hope. You know, she had three neurologists, um, her doctors. Nobody gave me any hope at all. And I had hope. Although every doctor, neurologist, everybody I knew said it wouldn't help her. Um, you know, if you're a mom with a child who suddenly becomes ill, you know you'll try anything. And I didn't know what this was, never heard about it, but I started researching and realized that in the United States, treating neurological conditions in hyperbarics just wasn't done. Um, it was, there was a few places around the country, I found out later that was doing it, but it was not something that you could go to your local hospital and have done. And after a lot of fight and thinking my daughter was actually going to die before I could get her in a chamber, we had a place, um, actually a local hospital, uh, agree to treat her. Um, very expensive. They um, were charging me $2,000 a day to treat her. And they she needed daily therapy, but, you know, I didn't care. I was willing to pay anything. And even though nobody believed it would help, actually within five days, she went from functioning as, she functioned between 11 and 14 months. She was 10 at the time we treated her um, to functioning cognitively um, as a 10 year old. She could see again, she could talk, she could read. Um, it took us another um, two months. We, she actually did 60 treatments before she could walk and really be fluent in everything. But um, it was amazing just to watch her come back. And that inspired me to open my own clinic. What's kind of cool that I think is that when we were trying to figure out how to pay for it and everyone's saying it's not going to work and you're looking at they required $72,000 as a down payment and you're trying to sell everything and secure money any way you can. Um, my dad kept telling me, we'll never say what if. We'll never look back and say, what if we would have tried this? And that line really stuck with me. And it gave me hope to keep trying that we had to try this. Well, fast forward, my dad had a new replacement three years ago. 
it was the second one. The first one was fine. Um, through a, um, actually a doctor's error, my dad ended up on a three-year journey, 12 surgeries. And at one point he was flat on his back trying to heal a horrific wound on where he lost the whole back of his calf um, and the top of his knee. Um, he, in order to heal it, he had to lay flat on his back for nine months. At that point, he's 78 years old. And you put somebody flat on their back trying to heal them. Well, because we have hyperbarics, we actually were able to treat my dad in hyperbarics. And not only did it heal his wound, it saved his life. Now, the other cool part is you think he celebrated his 80th birthday Sunday. You think somebody who's 80 years old and in under three years had 12 surgeries would have cognitive issues. Um, we've actually been able to do cognitive assessments through a quantitative EEG. His cognitive functioning has actually improved. So he's 80 years old. The, they were going to have to remove the leg. They were actually able to save the leg. He actually can walk a football length with the walker now and is recovering both physically and cognitively due to the programs we have here that we never would have had had he not encouraged me to treat my daughter. And by the way, the name of the center Oxford is named after my dad. What a great part of the story that that's how the name came about. But Tammy, I think your personal experience offers the parents that you come, that come to your center for hope and for help and for healing. You are able to offer them something so special because you've actually walked in those shoes that that sense of desperation they feel you're able to help alleviate that. Yeah, it's amazing giving people the hope that I was able to get for my daughter and watching other kids take their first step or seniors be able to cognitively get their functioning back. So it's been a blessing. And we're going to talk so much more about some of those success stories, but also why is hyperbaric oxygen therapy a great treatment for many things? Dr. Tammy will come back with us here on WJR, along with the medical director at Oxford Recovery Center, Dr. Christian Bodner. Stay with us. The Where Healing Begins show continues here on WJR. We're back with more of Where Healing Begins here on WJR. I'm Marie Osborne, along with Dr. Tammy Peterson, the founder of the Oxford Recovery Center. And Dr. Tammy, you told us the great story about how you founded this center so many years ago. But there are a lot of questions still among people who want to know more about HBOT therapy. So tell us, why is HBOT such a great treatment? Well, it's actually quite simple. Our body uses oxygen to heal itself. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy provides the body with 100% oxygen under increased atmospheric pressure. This helps our body absorb more oxygen to the point it saturates the plasma with oxygen, which in turn enables it to penetrate deeper into our damaged or injured tissue than the oxygen delivered just by our red blood cells. Well, this actually is how the healing begins. I have our medical director with me, Dr. Christian Bogner, and he's gonna help me with more of the technical side to how hyperbaric oxygen therapy works. Thank you, Tammy. Um, as you know, the 2019 Nobel Prize in Medicine went to uh, three researchers who identified the molecular machinery that actually regulates the activity of our genes in response to uh, varying levels of oxygen. So their work has opened new avenues for treating diseases like cancer, anemia, and many others. And you might think that, you know, with this discovery, we're just scratching the surface, but it's actually, uh, this research has been an ongoing thing for many decades. Um, and so we provide hyperbaric oxygen in a controlled environment. It's a very safe, but very powerful technology. So in, in fact, it delivers about 800% more oxygen to the brain and other tissues um, than the air that we're breathing right now, providing oxygen. So this has many medical, medicinal benefits, including destroying uh, harmful bacteria, for example, or encouraging uh, blood vessel growth, 
It's uh, fighting off viruses. It heals wounds, uh, to name a few uh, benefits. But perhaps the most effective way that hyperbaric oxygen is um, having an effect on the human body is it reduces inflammation, which is an issue in very many conditions. How does oxygen do this? How can more oxygen, for example, reduce inflammation? That's a great question. So in general, we we have to consider two major keys here. Um, For one, as Tammy has mentioned, in the chamber, uh, in the oxygen chamber that we have, the body is exposed to so much oxygen, we don't have enough red blood cells to carry it all. So it actually dissolves freely in our blood without being attached to anything. So this makes the oxygen pass through much smaller spaces much more uh, effectively because it does not require these red blood cells to carry them. This alone will reach areas that are inflamed much more readily. Uh, And the best way I always think about it is think of an accident on the expressway where hundreds of cars start to pile up behind. Uh, It's harder for the ambulance now to get to the scene of the accident, uh, for example, than a motorbike would be, uh, which can go in between the cars Uh, that are waiting for the road to get cleared. And this is how dissolved oxygen works. Secondly, and more strikingly, is how the oxygen uh, in these high concentration activate genes in our DNA to express themselves. Uh, As you know, the DNA doesn't always continuously express itself. It needs a signal from the environment. That's called epigenetics. And here in particular, we're talking about genes that are involved in reducing inflammation. That is their sole purpose. And these genes, uh, some of your listeners might be interested, is GPX, GSTP, SOD, catalase. Those are all genes that reduce inflammation. So these genes are responsible uh, also uh, for binding chemicals and toxins. And, uh, of course, overall reducing the amount of free radicals that are around. So this phenomenon has been described in multiple studies, specifically involving the activation of a protein called NRF2, which is a protein that then travels once it's activated to the nucleus of each cell and activates our DNA to to execute these functions. So what are a few of the common conditions that you treat? And what's the science behind why these treatments work? So we treat a lot of different conditions, but for some of the more frequent ones we see in our centers are autism, traumatic brain injuries like concussions and strokes, but also autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and of course, we see a garden variety of complicated wounds, Lyme disease, macular degeneration, as, as well as others that you know had a fairly favorable outcome. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy is at the center of our healing services, but we provide a synergistic approach to recovery. Um, For strokes, for example, hyperbaric can help heal the damage to the brain, but the damage sometimes is reflected more than just the brain. The damage is actually not in the arm. So let's say you have like paralysis in your arm. People think that the damage is in the arm, but it's actually the brain connecting to the arm. And we've got to get the brain to reconnect. So as the hyperbaric heals the brain, um, our synergistic approach, we have a very intense physical therapy for our stroke program that's actually done in three hour blocks where we can get the brain to reconnect with the body so we can start showing correct movement versus the compensation. Um, We also offer speech therapy and occupational therapy all under one roof together where they work together so you get a much better outcome than you would if it was in isolation. We want them to have their lives back to the way they were before. Um, Quantitative EEGs and neurofeedback uh, are some other therapies that we utilize here in conjunction. Uh, including with patients who suffered a stroke, for example, years back. Um, And, uh, you know, we have patients who did not have much success with traditional PT or simply did not have the ability, you know, due to their physical limitations that that uh, injury caused. So that's where neurofeedback fits in perfectly. Basically, with this technology, uh, with the quantitative EEG, uh, we measure the electrical frequency of 19 areas in the brain. 
And then the software tells us where there's too much or maybe too little activity. And once we have identified these problem areas, we can then train the brain to activate certain brain networks to compensate for these deviations. And so we use sound and visual cues to achieve this. It's really a fascinating technology uh, that we also use for autism, depression, anxiety disorders, and also even conditions like Alzheimer's disease. So again, the synergistic approach of providing the hyperbarics with the retraining component allows our patients to get the best outcome ever. You're listening to Where Healing Begins here on WJR with the founder of the Oxford Recovery Center, Dr. Tammy Peterson, and the medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner. When we come back, we'll be talking a bit about autism and how HBOT can help. You're listening to WJR. Welcome back to Where Healing Begins here on WJR with the Oxford Recovery Center founder, Dr. Tammy Peterson, and the medical director, Dr. Christian Wagner. Now, both of you mentioned autism, and I know you offer so many programs for treating autism. Is hyperbaric oxygen therapy one of them? Uh, Good question. Now, what's, what's interesting is that many of our BCBAs, Uh, which are basically our well-trained ABA coordinators here in our program uh, that are running our behavioral program for autism, they often express notable changes uh, in the individual child's behavior once they have reached a certain depth during the HBOT treatment. And, you know, those BCBAs don't know when they reach that, but they do uh, realize when there's changes in the symptoms. Uh, So it is premature to make medical claims, of course, but the results that we see here every day are very positive. Uh, And this has sparked uh, Casey Diskin, who is our executive director of the autism services, to see what measurable differences we actually could find. Right now, we have preliminary numbers of approximately 75% more spontaneous speech in the first four weeks in a child who undergoes hyperbaric oxygen treatment and uh, is involved in the ABA therapy versus a child just doing the ABA. So again, this is not a double-blind, randomized controlled trial, uh, which is the gold standard for clinical trials, uh, trials, but it is a great start. And we are working to get this published in in due time. I love when we're able to treat our children with autism and hyperbarics and watching them talk for the first time. But our ABA program is a very unique approach to ABA. So we always say, ABA can be fun, and it's often done in just a room or in the home without integration, and we have the coolest ABA program for the summer. It's called Camp ABA, where the kids are actually in one of our locations at a camp-like environment where they actually um, work on higher functioning skills in an ABA while they're doing camp crafts, learning how to set up a tent, going for walks. We have a huge um, fenced in area that they can play in and it's in a camp setting. It backs up right up to Island Lake State Park. So that's one of our fun programs that we do offer for the summers, Camp ABA. So Dr. Peterson, what is the proof that hyperbaric oxygen therapy works? Either, Either you or Dr. Bogner can answer this question. Go ahead. Well, uh, just to give you a couple numbers, but uh, in the last 60 years, there have been over 15,000 studies uh, published that involved hyperbaric oxygen, um, you know, and that has been cataloged in the National Public Library of Medicine. So anybody can look that up right now. Uh, basically, that means that there are over 250 studies published every year for the last 60 years, and they have looked at the consequences of hyperbaric oxygen exposure in various settings, uh, animals, humans, uh, laboratory, Um, and there have been many promising studies. Uh, We know uh, more well-designed studies uh, need to be done. However, this is why we have created a research team here at Oxford uh, to gather more data uh, to test theories uh, and hypotheses. We've really been expanding with our research team. We've made several amazing observations and formed some hypotheses. 
based on what we observe, and we're documenting this with our research team. And we look forward to someday soon, hopefully, starting to publish well-designed studies, presenting the evidence of what we actually get to see every day. So what are the, some of the things that you've been working on? Well, uh, Camp, ABA, Camp ABA, for example, is a big one, like Tammy was just describing. But um, our autism program's executive director, like I mentioned, Casey Diskin, she's currently working um, on uh, to find a difference, you know, in these children that undergo hyperbaric therapy with ABA versus just ABA um, to look at the spontaneous speech aspect. Um, and again, I can tell you the results are very promising. Uh, I'm personally working on a paper in, in which I want to make a case that autism could be a state of uh, altered perceived realities uh, due to inflammation, genetic predispositions, neurotransmitter imbalances, and the formation of uh, psychoactive chemicals. Um, autism is very complex, so we are trying to create basically a roadmap for the proper navigation through these processes uh, necessary to, to get the child better. You're listening to Where Healing Begins here on WJR uh, with the founder of the Oxford Recovery Center, Dr. Tammy Peterson, and the medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner. So for both of you, Dr. Bogner especially, why is it important to find the root cause instead of just treating the symptoms, which is often the case? Well, that's a great question, Marie. Um, let me give you an example. So in medical school, uh, I was taught that anxiety and depression are symptoms of low serotonin, a neurotransmitter in the brain. So your family doc prescribes you a serotonin uptake inhibitor, we call it an SSRI, which is supposed to prevent you from breaking down serotonin. So more of it sticks around. It makes perfect sense, at least theoretically. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it's a dangerous mistake. The problem is that too high levels of serotonin create anxiety just as low levels of serotonin do. And since we're taught that anxiety may be a symptom of depression, we're back at square one to treat this particular patient with the high serotonin anxiety as depression with SSRIs. And now you're making the condition even worse as you escalate this patient's serotonin from high to astronomical high, and the patients can snap and commit suicide. This is why they had to add suicide to the black box warning on SSRIs. The reason is that it is being prescribed recklessly, like it's candy. I mean, just look at the facts. One in 10 Americans relies on SSRIs. A study from Vanderbilt uh, University and the University of Virginia, they looked at 375,000 patients collected from 16 other studies, and they concluded that SSRIs raise your risk of premature death by 33%. Plus, they have found that if you have 14% higher, that you have 14% higher risk of cardiovascular disease, uh, like stroke or heart attack. Other studies now show that long-term usage of SSRIs uh, are completely ineffective. I really urge everyone to do, to do their own research, of course, and talk to your physician. Do not discontinue your SSRIs because you hear this. Uh, this is just a discussion we have and, and not medical advice, obviously. But you're able to test to figure out if an SSRI would be appropriate or not. And that's what we're talking about when we say getting to the root cause. Instead of just saying, here's a symptom, here's a drug. We're going to say, here are the symptoms. Let's dig deeper to figure out really why you have those symptoms. Why did you have the stroke? Why do you have anxiety and depression? And we want that root, the why. Exactly what I was going to say. You're, you're very focused on the why. It sounds like uh, all of us need to be more in tune with the root causes uh, of our medical conditions. And again, not just the symptoms, correct? Absolutely. And when you know that, we can create a customized plan for our patients. And for strokes, you know, we can treat them in hyperbarics and physical therapy, occupational and speech therapy. But kind of the, the foundation then is Dr. Wagner meets with them. He does a full intake where he listens to them for over an hour, where he's really listening. And then he's researching and looking at lab results, meeting with them again to figure out why you had the stroke in the first place. Let's try to give you back your quality of life. And it's amazing when he sits down and really researches this, how simple it can be. Sometimes it's just a few supplements mm -hmm. and life changing for our patients who come and do the full program. And again, it's critical. 
uh, as talking with you through the last few years that we've known each other, that each person is very unique. Each person's case is very unique. And you just don't, uh, you, you delve into that. You delve into the uniqueness and the problems that each person presents and try to come up with a solution that fits that person, not necessarily just their problem. That's one of the things I love about what we do. Um, I always say, I want to get you better and never see you again. Right. And it's not that we don't love our patients, but you just watch them come to you and just start improving and getting their life back. And what's sad is so many times they go, I've wasted years of my life in traditional type of therapies. Even though I think we're traditional, we just do traditional therapy with a twist um, hyperbarics are in every hospital, but we treat them for things like strokes or traumatic brain injuries. You can call the Oxford Recovery Center at 248-486-3636. Again, that number is 248-486-3636, or get all the information you'd like at the Oxford Recovery Center.com. Where the healing begins here on WJR with the founder of the Oxford Recovery Center, Dr. Tammy Peterson, and its medical director, Dr. Christian Bogner. What are some of the uh, conditions that you see most often at the Oxford Recovery Center? Well, as we've already talked about, autism is a major focus for us here. But traumatic brain injuries, concussions, stroke, also autoimmune diseases like arthritis. Um, MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, wounds, macular degeneration, and Lyme disease are some common conditions we also see at our center. Over our nearly 14 years, we have successfully treated more than 100 different conditions. Well, one of my favorites is actually treating macular degeneration. There is nothing like seeing someone get their driver's license back or tell me they were able to see their grandchildren again. That's right, Tammy. Uh, macular degeneration, uh, for example, like Tammy mentioned, uh, that usually occurs after the age of 60 and progressively worsens your vision. Visual impairment limits your ability to safely drive a car and is associated with uh, increased rates for falls and hip fractures. And uh, this condition is the leading cause of adult blindness in, in all industrialized uh, countries. Uh, and it's happening in, in about 13 out of 100 elderly patients over the age of 84. So it's a, it's a really a big problem. Well, another condition that's very dear to my heart is cerebral palsy, or CP. As a former special education teacher, I know that kids with CP, they're so loving and they deserve all that we can do for them. Hyperbarics is a major part of our program, but our synergistic approach really helps us provide them with a customized treatment plan unique for our CP patients. And we have seen amazing results with a combination of HBOT and physical therapy and often with occupational and speech therapy combined. That's right. Our synergistic approach works very well for CP because the causes uh, of cerebral palsy follow a very broad spectrum. What makes our approach effective is that we take the time to truly understand each individual case of CP. With uh, so many therapies available in our arsenal, including hyperbaric oxygen, we can then tailor the treatments to optimize recovery. Uh, once the treatment plan is then in place, our providers here work with each, uh, with each other to make sure that the treatment plan we prescribe is implemented fully to get the best results. Plus. This approach is helpful for our treatment um, coordination perspective. It provides a convenience of all the therapies needed under one roof. Many of our patients find it difficult to use all the therapies because they need to go back and forth from clinics, wasting precious time that they could be actually in therapy. Where here, it's all in one facility. Now you mentioned the synergistic approach. Is that just for cerebral palsy? Well, since the beginning, Oxford really hasn't deviated too much on how a medical condition is approached. No matter if it's CP or stroke, if you have memory problems after your head was hit by a golf ball, we look at the condition and provide a holistic approach to treatment. If it is acute trauma, like you have a rotator cuff tear, well, it's, if it's completely torn, then hyperbaric oxygen won't reverse that. However, 
research has shown that um, you will have a much better outcome if you treat uh, with hyperbarics before and after your surgery. But what if you have severe inflammation that resulted from too many toxins, for example, or a weakened immune system? Uh, then what is needed for repair is removing the offending agent that created the inflammation in the first place. Hyperbarics can help stimulate these genes that are not only involved in activating anti-inflammatory processes, but also in detoxification processes. For example, it's increasing the body's capacity to grab chemicals and eliminate them without the drama of producing free radicals. Uh, you know, those are the little molecules that cause the actual inflammation. So the implications of uh, a reduction of inflammation, no matter what the disease process, is a huge benefit for the organism's healing processes. You're listening to the Where Healing Begins here on WJR, the Oxford Recovery Center. Dr. Tammy Peterson telling us so much more about what's going on at the Oxford Recovery Center. And of course, we're all enjoying the warmer weather. We're seeing spring really in full bloom, but that could mean trouble ahead in terms of cases of Lyme disease. And I know, Tammy, that that is something that you talk about a lot. Um, what are some of the treatments that you can offer for this persistent, chronic, and sometimes very elusive uh, disease called Lyme disease? As we start getting outdoors more, ticks are more active, and we, of course, have an increase of bites. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is very effective for treating Lyme disease. That's right. Just to give you a little bit of data, um, there was a special study done uh, on patients with chronic Lyme disease, including both adults and children who did not get any relief and help from IV antibiotics. Uh, they had 66 participants confirmed with positive Lyme, and they experienced an average of 85% improvement in their condition by just using hyperbaric oxygen um, after every other medical therapy, again, has failed. Our clinical experience also attests to this finding. Uh, individuals with uh, Lyme disease experience increased energy, they have better sleep, decreased joint pain. Um, for example, in the 1990s, uh, researchers at uh, Texas A&M University found that hyperbaric oxygen treatments proved effective in treating Lyme disease because the higher pressurized atmosphere produced oxygen levels that killed off the bacterium uh, that causes the disease. This is the main reason hyperbaric oxygen is a, a, an effective treatment for Lyme disease. However, uh, Chinese researchers also reported that they eliminated Lyme disease symptoms in a patient from Taiwan using hyperbaric oxygen treatments uh, after, again, treatments with antibiotics have failed. So they're proving that not only in the United States, but everywhere else in the world as well. Well, in springtime, we also see an increase in outdoor activity. So concussions goes along with that or traumatic brain injuries, motorcycle accidents. Um, so these TBIs, you know, usually caused from some sort of blow to the head um, are also a big part of our yeah. treatment. I have patients that come to see me, you know, college students that go for a skiing trip, they wear a helmet, but then they have an accident. They pass out for a couple seconds, you know, they bring them to the ER, they get cleared. They say, oh, you have no brain bleed whatsoever. But however, then the next year they start to have memory problems. They tend to be have sleeping problems, get depressed, and they drop out of college. And then they come see us and we're like, well, that's most likely because of your initial traumatic brain event. And we start from scratch. We sit down, we talk about diet, we check their genes, their transmitters. And of course, we, we have the benefits of the hyperbaric oxygen to, you know, the goal being complete recovery. Concussions, the research is showing, if you suspect a concussion and we can actually treat you right away within 48 hours, it actually only requires one or two treatments, and the research shows it will bounce them right back. But it's when people for a long time, it does end up causing longer treatment times. But it is reversible. So whether it's a severe traumatic brain injury or a minor concussion, hyperbarics can actually reduce that brain inflammation and heal the trauma caused by those brain injuries. And, and Marie, I have to interject here. I have four children. I love football and here in this country called soccer, but girls soccer is the number one uh, sports in high school that uh, leads to concussions, traumatic brain events. And 
uh, like Tammy said, the quicker you intervene, the quicker uh, you will have, uh, you know, no long-term consequences, you know, and many parents hope for scholarships, athletic scholarships, and, and so forth. And not only that, but cognitive abilities in school. Um, and so we don't want to interfere with that process, and we want to provide that help uh, as quickly as we can. Get them back. And the, problems, and the problems with concussions can be long-lasting, lifelong, if they're not dealt with, correct? Absolutely. We want to thank both of you so much for joining us today here on WJR. It's always a pleasure to get a deeper insight into the Oxford Recovery Center. We've been talking with Dr. Tammy Peterson and Dr. Christian Wagner from the Oxford Recovery Center. Thank you for telling us about hyperbaric oxygen therapy and all the research that you're conducting. If you'd like to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen therapy or how the Oxford Recovery Center can help you with more than 100 medical conditions, you can go to OxfordRecoveryCenter.com or you can call 248-486-3636. Again, that's 248-486-3636. Dr. Tammy and Dr. Bogner, thank you so much again for joining us today. Thank you, Thank Marie. you.